What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your senior enlisted advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey, good to see you. Hi, guys. Man, it is it is pouring down outside. That's It but, is. <laughs> yes. Rain for days but it, <laughs> and days. I know, but it's not going to rain on our parade today because we got an awesome no. guest that uh, produced a movie about a story that most airmen and guardians out there are very, very familiar with, uh, especially enlisted, because uh, I can attest that, uh, you know, our promotion process is we have to kind of study uh, a, a huge book that has a, a whole bunch of different topics, but one of them is Air Force history, and this this story uh, is definitely in that, in that book. So uh, without further ado, please introduce today's guest, Julie. We're honored to have our guest with us today, especially as Memorial Day approaches. He has a strong sense of patriotism and a passion for the military. He is a Hollywood producer with an impressive filmography, and his most recent film, The Last Full Measure, tells about the heroic legacy of Medal of Honor recipient, Purple Heart recipient, and Vietnam Air Force veteran William Pitsenberger. Please help us give a warm chief chat welcome to Sydney Sherman. Hey. Hey, how are you? Thanks for having me here honor today. Thank you. Excellent. Um, Sydney, thanks so much for taking time out to join us and everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Uh, you may have a chance to win a Blu-ray of the last full measure and a signed poster. So check out the details in our comments section. We have a link to all the rules. Share your love with Sydney in the comments. We will read those live throughout the broadcast. Now you should start your watch party so you can enjoy this live interview with your friends. And if you're not following our page, you should. Chief chats are every week and we have military exclusive guests <laughs> lined up for you all summer. Awesome. Awesome. So Sydney, thank you so much for sharing some time with us today. Thank you for having me. It's a real honor. Awesome. Awesome. Can you tell the viewers where you're joining us from today? Uh, I'm in Los Angeles, California. If you, uh, if you know LA, I'm not far from UCLA's campus. And I, I can imagine it's not raining there. Because it, no. it never rains in Southern I'm, California. I'm going to make you feel really bad because it's 80 and clear. <laughs> it's the only reason to come to L.A. Good, good punch. Good punch from the jump. Yeah, pretty jealous of that right now. Not going to yeah. lie. Yeah. Um, so, Sydney, this has been a rough year for the motion picture industry. What's it been like for you? And what do you see as far as a recovery in the future? Um, well, I think we're very much sort of similar to the national economy in that a lot of things shut down, you know, specifically like theatrical movies and people going to movie theaters just stopped. So you suddenly had all these movies that were supposed to come out in the studios, either pulled them and held them back for the following year, or they released some of them on streaming just because they had to get these movies out. There were too many backlogged. Um, you know, we've never had anything happen like this. It's unprecedented. So I think everyone is adjusting on the fly and figuring out what the new normal is. I mean, for me personally, obviously, uh, it's been challenging because there's things that you were hoping were going to go into production that suddenly just got pushed aside. And then, you know, I also represent writers and directors on the management side, and there was just less production jobs for people because um, production was reduced a lot. So I think that I'm hoping now that people are getting their vaccines and we see the cases going down that, um, you know, things are starting to open up. So I'm hopeful that in the fall, you know, we'll all be back to the movie theaters again, watching our favorite film, Fast and Furious or uh, <laughs> whatever movie you're excited about seeing. And I think that's uh, going to be a great thing for our business and just the economy and people's psychology of being able to go out and do normal stuff. You know, I think we're all feel like we've been prisoners in our home as much as we love them. We're all about tired of our dogs barking at the Amazon <laughs> delivery man. <laughs> uh, we love Excellent. the movies. That's one of the biggest things like my family would do for fun would be to go to the movies. And it's not the same um, watching things on streaming, not being able to go to the theater. It's, it's really been a hard year. So looking forward to the fall and, and new releases coming up. Yeah, there's something special about being in a dark theater and, you know, sharing that communal experience of seeing a film and people screaming and stuff or laughing you kind of lose yourself and you really get into the movie and forget about your problems for like two hours you know yeah when you're at home watching a movie you stop it go to the bathroom go to the refrigerator 
your dog needs a walk. It takes you two days to watch a movie, you know? So it's, it's not the same experience for sure. As much as I love Netflix and all the streamers, uh, I think theaters are going to come back strong. That's my opinion and hope for sure. Yeah. And at the movie theaters, you make a mad dash to the bathroom and you hurry up and make it, make it quick and then get back to the movies. That's so. right. You don't know when to go, right? Like you want like something flashing saying, good time to go to the bathroom, but yeah, you yeah. just run and hope you don't miss something good. I think there's actually, there's actually an app for that. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like, oh, like, wow. time, like time to pee or something. Like seriously. Oh like, my gosh. Google that after yeah. the show. <laughs> yeah. Like this is a good time to get up and go during Spider-Man or whatever. So maybe don't, don't get that extra large Coke before. I know, exactly. <laughs> and, and, we're, and we're not endorsing the app, but it's time nope. to pee. It's yeah. Yeah. No, 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 well, I personally love to go and just have popcorn and candy. <laughs> There's nothing better than movie theater popcorn. Yeah. You know, when I was a kid, there was a theater near my house. It was called the Oriental Theater, and it was two movies for $2. And my friends and I would go every week, and we didn't care what was playing because it was two bucks, and it was two movies. And they used to play foreign movies, and they would play, you know, um, Chinese martial arts films. We'd see, you know, classic films. We didn't care. We just went because it was cheap and it was fun. <laughs> and I think that's where I fell in love with movies, you know. Excellent. So let's talk about your career. Uh, you have, your resume is quite impressive with more than 20 movie credits to your name. So is there one that stands out or means the most to you? Well, definitely. I mean, the last full measure, uh, you know, it started as a movie, I always say, and then it became like a transformative experience, you know, by it took so long to make the film. We had a lot of um, fits and starts where it almost got made and then it would fall apart or we'd lose a star, or lose the money. And then just the process of making the movie and the men that we got to meet along the way who were veterans of the battle um, or people who just wanted to help the film who were Vietnam era you know, PJs or veterans. And uh, that's really the experience that I'll always cherish because the relationships I made with these incredible people that I never would have met if I hadn't made this film. So uh, I really feel blessed. And some of them are my friends to this day. And we text each other all the time. I was just talking to uh, John Pagini, who was our military advisor on the movie over the weekend. Uh, and um, he was a PJ in Vietnam. And he was our, he went to Thailand with us and we shot the film, the Vietnam part of it. And he was our uh, advisor and made sure we got everything right. And uh, I'm just very far fortunate to have been able to make this movie and tell this story of, of William Pitsenbarger and to meet these incredible people. I just, uh, every day I feel like I can't believe I, I got to do it. So, uh, I mean, as we can tell, man, you're a huge supporter of the nation's military and, and, it's awesome, and I know the folks from the Vietnam era, you know, they weren't treated as well as they, they should have coming back from that war. Uh, so it's awesome that you're able to, to, A, give them a platform to kind of tell a story and get some stuff off their chest, but A, just acknowledge the fact that they're, they're still, their nation, they're our nation's heroes. Uh, and, and so before the pandemic, you attended uh, several military screenings of the last full measure, um, uh, the last full measure at exchange theaters on your own dime. So, uh, man, that's that, that's awesome. So what fuels your passion for appreciation for the military? You know, we were very lucky in that um, we were just talking before the show started about, you know, John, who um, used to run the exchange um, theater um, office, and he set up screenings. We did like 30 military screenings across the country, and, you know, we got to go everywhere. I mean, I think one of the ones that was most meaningful was going to Kirtland Air Force Base uh, in New Mexico, because that's the, we went there for the pararescue graduation. Oh, it was the graduation weekend, all the families were there. Um, we showed the film several times. And I got to tell you, like, I, you know, I get goosebumps thinking about it. It was just so amazing to show the film to those people then. And a lot of the vets who were in the movie actually came, uh, to the event and were there, um, the actual survivors of the battle. It was so emotional, so amazing. And, um, you know, and then I got to attend the PJ graduation, which is something uh, that very few people get to do. And, uh, you know, these are our hardened 
the best of the best that the military puts through, you know, the training that the PJs go through is just amazing. And uh, I'm really in awe, honestly, it's, there's such a outstanding group of people. And, you know, when you think about who's representing us out there, uh, I can't imagine better people on this earth uh, than the men and women of the military and the PJs, um, you know, are right there with the best of the best. You know, personally for me, uh, I grew up, my dad um, was from Romania, but he was born a US citizen because his dad was an American. And he was a product of World War II, you know, child survivor. And he always had a very strong um, commitment to the US and the opportunities that the, you know, the United States gave him. Uh, growing up and being able to come here and it was a huge support of the military. And um, my father-in-law was a, a lieutenant in the Air Force and uh, he was served during Korea. So I've been surrounded by the military, I guess, or, you know, affinity for it all my life. So I guess it's no surprise that I would gravitate towards stories about the military, but certainly I, I did not expect sort of the experience that I was going to get making the movie and certainly um, very fortunate to have met these incredible people. No, no, and we appreciate you for, for highlighting these stories uh, that, that a lot of people in the country have no idea about. And so, um, like I said, we, there's some incredible folks uh, serving, you know, in, in, in uniform, past, present, and, and future. And just to get those stories out is, is uh, very, you know, it, it just, it, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing and, and it, it kind of puts uh, things in perspective as far as, because uh, I know when I deployed, I really, I, I really started to uh, look at life a little bit different. And, and I saw that, you know what, the stuff that we, I would maybe get mad at or, or, or kind of focus on, you know, before I deployed wasn't in the grand scheme of things that, that important. And then when I deployed and saw folks that are, you know, we're in a danger zone, we're all, we, we all come from different backgrounds, we all got each other's back. And it's, uh, we just know that, you know, it's, it, it is a lot more important things in the world than, than, you know, fighting over something frivolous back home. So uh, thank 100%. you for telling the stories. You know, I remember being at Lackland Air Force Base and I was talking to uh, uh, a Colonel there who's now in Germany, um, Colonel Trax, when he was talking about, I think he's been deployed like 10 times or something all over the world. And he was saying that, you know, because he never knew when he was going to be home, they used to have a Christmas tree in the closet. And whenever he came home, that was Christmas. Yeah. They'd pull out the tree and it could be, you know, September or it could be January or it could be April. They'd celebrate Christmas. And, you know, as a civilian, you really don't think about those types of things, but those are huge sacrifices that the men and women of the military make every day, you know, on our behalf so we can enjoy these incredible freedoms. And it's giving up birthdays with your kids, anniversaries, you know, missing births of your children sometimes because you're deployed and can't get back, you know. I mean, just incredible sacrifices that, um, you know, it's really awe-inspiring when you think about what people are willing to do. Service on behalf of others, you know, really sort of the highest calling, but not many people meet that calling, but the men and women of the military do. And that's something that's always worth saluting and celebrating. So in my small way, if I can give something back by telling their stories, I think that's a, a great thing. And let's talk about the last full measure. We had the honor of hosting the film's writer, Todd Robinson, on our show last summer. This film and it has an amazing cast, Jeremy Irvine, Christopher Plummer, William Hurt, Samuel L. Jackson, and more. Um, if you haven't seen it, it tells of the efforts to have the Medal of Honor awarded to William Pitsenbarger, who flew in helicopter rescue missions during the Vietnam War. What attracted you to this film, and what did you find most impressive about Pitsenbarger's heroic actions? Um, well, when you sat down with Todd, he probably told you a little bit about the, the background. He came to the story. He was working on a, actually another modern-day pararescue project for Warner Brothers, and uh, when he was going around sort of interviewing people on the pipeline and learning about what, you know, pararescue is. Everybody kept telling him, oh, that's really cool that you're making this movie, but what about William Pitsenbarger? And he was like, you know, who's William Pitsenbarger? And as he started hearing the story, he was getting sort of more and more sucked in. And then at a certain point, Todd called me up and he's like, well, I have our next movie. 
And I was like, cool, what is it? And then he started telling me the story of William Pitsenbarger. And uh, I got sucked in right away because I was um, couldn't believe that at such a young age, he had done so much. I mean, I think at the time he was like 21, he'd been on over 200 rescue missions already, which is just absolutely insane. Cause I'm thinking about it at 21, like showing up to class at school was uh, a big <laughs> task. And here was somebody risking their life, you know, every moment of their existence at a super young age. Um, and then as we started to meet the men that he's helped save um, and they just felt such a debt to him and wanted his story told so, so desperately. And at the time he had not been awarded the Medal of Honor yet. That was still a process that was happening. And then it, he did get it um, posthumously. Um, we just felt like it was a story that had to be told, you know, and we were sucked in emotionally and, you know, got to meet his father uh, and his family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we got invested. And, you know, once you have relationships with people, it's really different because then you feel um, you've made a promise. You know, Our promise was we were gonna tell his story as best we could and we we're gonna get it done. We didn't know it was gonna take us 20 plus years <laughs> to do it when it happened. We thought, man, we're gonna make this fast. Uh, and then like, you know, life happens when you make plans. So, <laughs> but you know, there's, there's something to, ultimately the way it all came together was sort of like we were kind of you know, touched by the angels, we like to say things sort of came together when it finally was its time. And we got an incredible cast um, who really deliver, I think, career performances. William Hurt, never been better. Sam Jackson's amazing. Christopher Plummer, God bless him, you know, his last movie. Yep. Um, and Peter Fonda, too, sort of a weird thing to happen, but both those actors, it was their last film. Um, that they did and just the young cast that we have Sir Darius Blaine and um, Cody Walker and just some really Jeremy Irvine really terrific young actors so we were, we were very blessed ultimately to get the cast we did and you know I wish that more people got to see it in theaters but the pandemic hit and you know their life had other plans for us all. Mm -hmm. And then several production companies passed on making this movie. So what no, made everybody passed like five times. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah, no, well, we, um, when we first had the story, we went around and pitched it around town, which is based like you take meetings and you tell people the story in a verbal pitch in like 15 or 30 minutes. And we pitched like 50 companies and everybody said, that's an amazing story. And everybody passed. <sighs> and um, then Todd and I were working on a, a TV series pilot and while we were shooting it and it wasn't going well and it wasn't our fault it was just like sometimes productions kind of go sideways and he turned to me one day on set and he's like when this thing's over like I'm just going to spec the script uh, which means he's going to write it without getting paid uh, with the hopes that we'd sell it um, and Todd did do that and then we sold it in a bidding war over Thanksgiving weekend um, to a studio called New Line and then we thought, oh man, we're gonna make this film really quick. And then Warner Brothers bought New Line and decided New Line wasn't <laughs> gonna make movies like ours anymore. And they gave us the movie back. That was after like two years after we were making offers to like huge actors and all this stuff. And we just had to start all over basically. And then it was wow. one time we were location scouting, you know, like we had supposedly the money and they called us and they said, oh yeah, the company's going bankrupt. You gotta come home. <laughs> wow. Oh man! Oh, gosh. Yeah, well, so that's it's terrible. Um, we're lucky we got to make it. You know, these are really hard movies to make. Uh, war films, specifically Vietnam, are always um, tricky, and uh, we were just very lucky. But Hollywood's always skeptical about Vietnam for some reason. I think you know there are some other great Vietnam movies, but they've kind of turned people off a little bit. World War II, in a way, is an easier one to make because there's more clear sort of good guys, bad guys. Mm -hmm. And Vietnam's a gray area. We'll talk about motivation for you to keep fighting to make sure that the story was told. So just how rewarding was that to finally see it come to life? Yeah, there was a day on set, we were doing the Medal of Honor ceremony and it was early in the shoot, it was like the first week. And like 
all the actors, just a lot of them, we hadn't even seen them yet. They were just coming in because you don't have everybody for the length of the show. They come in for their weeks, they're working. And it's like, all of a sudden, Sam Jackson steps in. Oh, William Hurt steps in. Oh, Ed Harris is over here. And it, was, it looked like the Oscars. Yeah. <laughs> like, this, is, this is our movie. It was, it was, it was pretty crazy. You kind of pinch yourself looking at the monitors and all these movie stars in your film and going, wow, uh, we got it made. But that's, that is the magic of what we do. There's so many question marks every day about, is this going to happen? Will that happen? Maybe this will happen. But then when you finally get to do it, yeah, it is really rewarding. You know, it's like building a big building or creating a business. It's, it's a startup from the ground up. Absolutely. And, and you, you had several screenings with military members where you personally attended. So yeah. uh, what was the reception like from the military audience? You know, amazing. Uh, people really <laughs> felt like we, um, that we, we took the time to get it right. You know? Yeah. Cause we're quick, we're quick to judge military members are quick to judge military movies because we live it and we're like, yeah, this, this rank looks a little off or this, he can't have this many ribbons. Like it just, we start judging from, from a distance a little bit. hundred percent, you know, and we, that's why like we had the advisors on early on we'd be like, wait, would he, you know, blouse his boots that way? You know, were these the legit dog tags? And like a lot of the stuff that um, Jeremy Irvine uses in the film for um, his Vietnam gear was actually John Pagini's gear from Vietnam. Like okay. he was using his real med kit bag he had filled it with a lot of his stuff that he still had. You know, we tried to keep that as like real and legit as possible. But to answer your question, yeah, the experience of going to these bases, meeting military members and their families and showing the film um, was amazing. I mean, I'll, I'll never forget it. And, you know, I want to be able to keep bringing other movies to bases. They don't have to be military movies. I think what you find is everybody loves films and they, you know, uh, all there's there's a reason all these theaters are on bases <laughs> you know people <laughs> like to have some downtime and check out and go see a movie for two hours and um, if we can give some you know of the members of the military uh, a fun time for a couple hours to enjoy films you know uh, I'd love to do that but for me um, to get to meet these people and you know talk to families and military retired and uh, active duty is the best experience ever. And I got to go to places I never thought that I would go like all over America. And you, you really start to see that we have more in common than we have differences as much as people try to get in silos and, you know, you watch the news and I tell you, I've been to so many military bases. I've never heard politics brought up once ever. Yeah. No one ever brings it up. They talk about team, you know, they talk about shared values you know, they talk about, you know, accomplishing goals and, and those things and a commitment to one another, but I, I've never heard politics discussed. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we, we tend to highlight our, our, our commonalities more than our differences uh, in the military, uh, just inherently, but yeah, you're, you're right. It's just, you know, we, we do have uncomfortable conversations sometimes, but the majority of the time we're, we're talking about things that, that bring us together. You know, I'll tell you one thing we, we got to do, which was such a treat, which was, um, you know, Gary Sinise has a foundation and he's a big supporter of the military. He's really amazing. He's going to be on the show too. I, I, oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, we actually got to meet him. So he was being honored by the Medal of Honor Society last year. And uh, Todd and I got to go to the dinner and it was the, the, most, um, the most living um, Medal of Honor recipients were there. There was like 20 of them and we got to sit at tables with them and talk to them real life heroes who were so humble quiet professionals like you had to like beat it out of them to find out what they did <laughs> yeah. you know to be you know awarded the medal of honor and it's just so uh, humbling you know here are people made such huge sacrifices and they've received the highest honor you know that our military will give and they barely talk about <laughs> what they did. And Hollywood would be like, oh man, let me tell you. And I was flying yeah. out of the helicopter. <laughs> there was none of that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, um, it really makes you sort of think about your values and, you know, what you um, subscribe to in life, what's important, what isn't. 
you know, and um, to get to attend that dinner and meet those Medal of Honor recipients was <laughs> really incredible. Yeah, we, yeah. Had, we had the pleasure of, uh, of hosting a few of them on our show last uh, around Veterans Day last year. And, uh, yeah. and, and like you said, they're not here to gloat or glamorize. And, they, and what we all noticed was they were freaking 22, 23 years old. Like they were really young when, when, the, when the action took place. So just like you were talking about uh, uh, Bill Pitts and Martyr, he, he was young. Uh, a, a lot of those other Medal of Honor recipients, they were, you know, 20 years old. And, and when, when I was 20, 21, 22, uh, I was in the military, but I, I still couldn't imagine myself having to do that. But I know I would do it if I had to do it. I just yeah. wasn't in a position to do that. So it's just, it's crazy uh, how young, how young they are. Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of, a lot of really young men um, put themselves in line. And women too, you know, obviously women I don't too. think, there's been one woman Medal of Honor recipient um, for a civil war. And I, I know that's a story that people want to tell. Absolutely. Yeah. So Sydney, can you give us a little bit of a glimpse into what your, what a typical day is like for you as a Hollywood producer? I think that's something that I, I know I, I know nothing about. And I, I don't think Leah in chief, I don't know that we're no, <laughs> on not, Hollywood sets very often. So we'd, <laughs> We'd, um, we'd, just lo we'd love to hear from you about like, what's a typical day like for you? Just give us a little bit of a glimpse into your world. Well, it's not glamorous, that's for sure. You know, a lot, a lot. What? Like, people, people see the red carpet and they think, oh, they're always at parties and they're hanging out with <laughs> movie stars. Like, not really, at least not, it's not my existence. There might be some people that's their lives. I mean, honestly, a lot of it's just, you know, um, making phone calls, connecting with executives, agents, you know, talent that you're working with and trying to move projects along step by step. Um, you know, these things take a long time and you're just constantly trying to push the rock up the hill. And uh, a lot of it is just staying on top of things and prioritizing. And sometimes cer certain projects suddenly get heat for whatever reason. You get a major element like a big director suddenly is on board or a star and that becomes your, fo your focus and everything else gets kind of pushed aside because that looks like something that's going to get done right away, you know? But I also manage, you know, 20 writers and directors. So I'm always talking to my clients and reading their material, sending their material out, you know, to executives and trying to get them jobs, sell their scripts. Um, so it's sort of just a constant thing about being in communication, either phone, email, and constantly connecting with people because people's needs change. Like I could talk to you two weeks ago and you tell me this is what we're looking for. And then suddenly there's a change at your company and now your mandate's different. So I have to now reach out to those executives again and find out what's your new mandate? You know, what are you looking for? And people jump around a lot too, like just like the military where you're stationed here and then tomorrow you're somewhere else. It's the same thing. People move around a lot and you need to keep track of where people are. And they're also your friends. So a lot of it is communal where you're just sort of like, you know, what's Doug up to? Oh, he's over at Warner Brothers now, you know, what's Aaron doing? So there's a lot of that, but it's not, um, it's not glamorous. Um, it's hard work, but it is fun. I mean, I will say that I'm very lucky that I get to do something that I enjoy and love and not a lot of people get to say that. And also I'm fortunate I get to make my own schedule. So if, my daughter's got something at school and I want to go, I can go, you know, and so, not everybody has that luxury, you know, some, I'm very blessed that way that I can do that, you know. So, so besides making, stuff. besides making your own schedule, Julie, you're the Hollywood producer of Chief Chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, Chief. <laughs> hey, we well, always was... need more good people, so you're welcome. Oh, no, yeah, she's not there. leaving. She's not leaving. <laughs> CALA, no. Sydney, I'm moving in. You know what? Look out. Austin, Austin's not far from you, and that's a big film, uh, film spot now too. So you, you could you could ply your trade in Austin. No, you Austin, know what? Peace no, out, Chief. No, we're good. Leo, Austin, see ya. See ya on the big no, screen. No, no, listen, <laughs> Austin, Austin, you can't have him. Uh -oh. <laughs> Don't forget us. Bring us with you. Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> I can't go anywhere without you. 
I love it. Well, that was very interesting to learn about that because yeah, I always thought that the producer is on set and looking at everything and making sure that it's what you were expecting. So well, when when you're in production, when you're in production, you're definitely on set, and then it's sort of managing managing the days, make sure you make your days, you're on time, you're getting what you need, supporting the director in terms of what their needs are. And then as the film moves into post-production, it's sort of managing all aspects of it. I mean, the thing about being a producer is you're at, usually at the project from the very beginning, if it's nasty in stage, to when it gets made. So you usually put in the most amount of time, you have the most sort of emotional investment mm. to it, except for like the director, because directors are always you know, deeply um, committed to what they're doing. But yeah, it's all it's all encompassing and production is its own animal and you kind of unplug from your life when you <laughs> shoot because everything is a second, second place. It just sort of overwhelms you. It's like being deployed uh, in a way, you know, you're just focused on what you're doing and everything else kind of is secondary. Fortunately, so we don't go to war zones. <laughs> so at least not not knowingly or willingly but you know uh our experience is different we get to pretend we may try to make it look real yeah so sydney what's ahead for you any projects upcoming that you'd like to talk about and share with our audience um well two things i'd like to mention one sort of more longer term i'm working on a movie called heart of the beast which is about a uh former navy seal uh, who crashes his airplane in the Alaskan wilderness with his combat dog. And it's a survival story. Uh, it's uh, man and dog versus nature. Um, and uh, that's really fun. We've been working on a while. We just got Len Wiseman on as a director. Um, we did one of the Die Hard movies. And uh, we're hoping that we're going to get to make that uh, later this year or next year, casting dependent, because we're out to actors right now. Uh, and then... Coming up, actually, for Memorial Day weekend, we're doing a really um, cool event, the Mo Mount Soledad National Veterans Memorial in San Diego. Um, they are honoring William Pitsenbarger uh, oh, on their wall there. And I don't know if you've ever been there. It's a pretty gorgeous spot, like on this hillside bluff overlooking the Pacific. And uh, it's also the 30th anniversary of Desert Storm, believe it or not. Oh, wow. So uh, they're doing that. something for that. So. Todd Robinson, the director and writer of the film, and I are going to be here this weekend, as well as um, a few of the veterans who are uh, part of the story. They're coming to town. Um, Phil Hall, who's one of the Mud Soldiers, Army veterans. Um, Dave Milston, who is what PJ and part of the um, Bill Pitsenbarger's team is also going to be there to speak. And, uh, you know, I think it's going to be a pretty pretty emotional special weekend and we're really lucky to be a part of it and to get to um you know honor our veterans um it's a it's a really special weekend so i'm um, fortunate we get to do something that gives something back so sydney we have uh service members and military families joining us from all around the world so uh you got any words of hope or inspiration uh for our nation's heroes especially leading up to memorial day um well, I guess I'd start with saying thank you because um, you're sort of the living example of the best of what, you know, I think uh, the United States has to offer to our world. Living a life in the service of others uh, is really a higher calling. Uh, not many people answer it, but the men and women of the military and armed services do. And uh, that's really special. It means a lot to me personally and to my family. And uh I just feel a lot of gratitude, you know, for for what you do day in and day out, um, putting yourselves on the line so we can enjoy the freedoms that we have and the things that we get to do and never think about. Um, while we're at home with families on holidays, you know, people are deployed in Afghanistan or um, all kinds of other, you know, tough places. So, you know, I say thank you. You're an inspiration to me. I don't know that I really have an inspiration to you except that say that I want to be a better version of myself because of the service that I've seen and the sacrifices that I see that the men and women, the armed forces do. It's uh, it's inspiring. You're really amazing people. And, you know, I'm just glad that I get to meet you and be able to tell your stories. It's an honor. 
Thank you for that. So Sydney, we just want to pause for a second and take a yeah. look at the live feed and share some of the comments that are coming in. Cool, cool. So Marie says, howdy, and thank you for your service and a big hello to the chief and staff. She also shared uh, later on that her her husband was a Vietnam veteran um, who she lost to Agent Orange. Mm, sorry, Heather. And Nolan is watching and she says, hello. Um, hey, Nolan. Hi, Sydney. I won't miss watching Sydney. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, Nolan's Nolan. great. She traveled with us to some of the bases we went to and um, it was really, uh, really special to get to do that. She went to Hawaii with us. I can't complain getting to go to Hawaii. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm scrolling really fast. Um, no worries. I don't know. I, I think that's it. Let me check Chief's page really quick and just to make sure there's no comments from Chief's page. I think we're good. I think we are right. good. But I do want to remind everybody, if you're watching, leave a note with your name and where you're watching from. And then we will um, be giving away some prizes uh, later. So we're going to give people the day to watch. So there's a link in the comments. And if you click on the link, it'll explain like all the rules and stuff to you if you're interested. So definitely leave your name and where you're watching and click on the link for all of the details on um, what you can win, which is a Blu-ray of The Last Full Measure, which is really, is an excellent film in Sydney. We are so honored that you were here to share, you know, some insight into the film with us today. And then you can also win a poster as well. So you guys don't want to miss out on that. Leave your name and your location of where you're watching from. So Sydney, where can viewers, if they haven't had the chance to see the film yet, and if they don't win the Blu-ray, where can they go to watch your movie, The Last Full Measure? Um, well, we're on all the digital platforms now. So Amazon, iTunes, Google Play, Hulu, um, pretty much anywhere where you sort of consume your normal media, we can be found. Um, and you can rent it or buy it. And we're also, obviously, we're on Blu-ray and home video. So if you want to own it, um, you can, Amazon is selling it and uh, Walmart. It's pretty much everywhere. It's a great watch this holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. I inc highly Amazing. encourage everyone to, to give it a chance. It's a really, really good film. Well, thank you. I hope people enjoy. Drop us a note. Awesome. So Sydney, man, thanks again for spending some time with us today. Uh, like I said, I appreciate uh, what you do and your investment in the military community to really kind of shine a light on, on all the, the stuff you know, that, that we, we deal with or, or have dealt with, or just, just, you know, showing the world uh, kind of the perspective of a military member. So uh, we definitely appreciate that. Uh, and, and we appreciate your support. And, and we, we are, you got, a, you got a big fan here uh, at, at APHIS uh, on, on all the projects that you're working on. Uh, this Navy SEAL and, and dog survival thing that sounds kind of cool too so it does sound cool yeah, yeah. yeah. So, i'm wait. super psyched about doing that and i got to meet a great uh um dog handler who's about to retire who's going to be our military advisor i won't say his name to get him in trouble but gotcha. um it's True. it's going to be awesome. awesome he's a badass Absolutely. <laughs> maybe he'll want to come and talk to us later one yeah day. maybe i'm yeah. sure he would <laughs> love that <laughs> i'm gonna tell him if he's listening awesome so uh yeah just good luck on all your future endeavors and like you said we thank you to support uh and if you don't mind staying back uh after the chief chat is over with i got something for you so for sure thank, thank you, you all for having me a real honor and uh to all our men and women serving thank you so much uh right here in los angeles we appreciate you uh, Godspeed, and uh, hope you're all safe and sound wherever you are. Thank you so much. Awesome. Awesome. Chief chat out. Chief chat out. Bye, Bye guys. Chief chat out. Bye. See you Thank later. You.